in this video we're gonna start working on the light uh, the, the night operations and the night preparations uh, we're gonna start talking uh, about some medical terms here so there are uh, two distinct type of uh, light sensitive cells located in our uh, in the re retina of the eye so those two uh, sensitive cells are known as rods and cones what they are is like they are the light sensitive cells located in the retina of a human eye okay what is the function of the cones and where are they located in the eye so specifically about the cones so they are used to detect the color detail and far away objects and are located in the center of the retina uh, at the back of the eye they are less uh, sensitive to light and they require the higher levels of intensity uh, to become active and similarly about the rods like their functionality and the location in the eye so they are located in the back of the eye or retina uh, the rods um, the function is like uh, when something is seen out of the corner of the eye or peripheral vision so whenever you are looking from this uh, uh, the side or peripheral vision basically they detect the objects particularly those that are moving uh, but do not give detail or color Uh, what is the average time it takes uh, for the rods and cones to become adapted to darkness? So the average time uh, is approximately 5 to 10 minutes. So if you are flying at night, it's going to take you 5 to 10 minutes uh, to adjust to the darkness. Right. okay actually this time 5 to 10 minutes is for the cones whereas the rods in order for the rods to adapt to the darkness it actually takes about 30 minutes okay what should the pilot do to, uh, to accommodate uh, changing light conditions So if the light conditions are changing, the pilot should allow enough time for the eyes. That's basically the trick is that you should give your eyes enough time to become adapted to the low light levels. And then should avoid the exposure to the bright lights. You shouldn't just keep switching from the, um, like the low light levels to the high light levels and vice versa. Okay, uh, several examples of uh, illusions related to the ground lighting conditions. Okay. So, there are going to be different scenarios, right? First scenario is like on a clear night, right? Uh, distant stationary lights can be mistaken for stars right? uh, or other aircraft. And certain uh, geometrical patterns of ground light such as a freeway or runway uh, approach or other or even lights or a moving train can cause confusion okay and another situation is going to be a black hole approach occurs uh, when the landing is made from over water uh, or non lighted terrain where the runway lights are the only source of light without peripheral uh, visual clues to help 
pilot uh, will have the trouble orient, uh, orienting sorry orienting uh, themselves relative to earth so what happens is like the runway can seem out of position and in the worst uh, case results in the landing short of the runway then there's another uh, illusion common illusion in the, for the night landings uh, can be uh, complicated by the uh, difficulty of judging distance and the possibility of confusing approach and runway lights so let's say if, like you have a double row of approach lights right uh, joins the the boundary lights of the runway uh, where uh, th there can be confusion uh, where the approach lights terminate so these are the different illusions which you can uh, which can happen while flying at night okay during takeoff you suddenly feel as if the aircraft is in an excessively high nose up uh, attitude right what type of illusion is this so this is known as somo so this is called the somatographic uh, gravic illusion so what this somatographic illusion is is like it's a rapid acceleration during takeoff and can create the illusion of being in the nose up attitude so at night uh, you are uh, uh, rapidly accelerating and and you are taking off uh, you may think uh, that uh, like you have a very nose high uh, attitude and, and this can actually disorient uh, uh, do the disorientation for the pile when ap approaching a well lit runway surrounded by a dark area or what little or no uh, where no little or no features uh, uh, with little or no features what illusion should a pilot uh, be alert for as i mentioned before like the, these are called the feature less terrain illu illusions <clears throat> So this is like an absence of ground features uh, as when landing over water da uh, darkened area uh, and terrain made featureless by snow I can create the illusion that the aircraft is at a higher altitude than it actually is right uh, the pilot who does not recognize this illusion will fly a lower approach Okay, what should the pilot do to maintain good eyes eyesight? Good eyesight depends on the physical condition, fatigue, uh, colds, vitamin deficiency, alcohol uh, st uh, stimulant, smoking, or the medication can seriously impair the vision. Just remember that. Okay, what can pilot do to improve the effectiveness of the vision at night? So, in order for have some effectiveness, right? Adapt the eyes to darkness prior to flight and keep them adapted. Like, give it uh, approximately 30 minutes uh, to adjust uh, after the exposure to the bright light. If oxygen is available, use it during the night flight. Right? And especially, uh, like if you are going above 5,000 feet, it's better to use it. Uh, close one eye when exposed to bright light to keep Oh, uh, to help avoid the uh, blinding effect. So if you are going to be looking at your uh, navigation system or well-lit lights uh, inside the cabin, uh, try to use one eye uh, uh, to get exposed with, the, with that and so that, that the other eye is again exposed to the darkness. Uh, do not wear sunglasses uh, after sunset. Do not do that move the eyes uh, more slowly uh, than in uh, daylight blink the eyes if they become blurred and concentrate on seeing objects focus the eyes uh, to view off center maintain good physical condition avoid smoking drinking and the other uh, drugs things
Okay, what equipment should be uh, should the pilot have for night flight operations? So at least one reliable flashlight is recommended as standard. Uh, a reliable incandescent, uh, can, in, incandescent or light emitted diode uh, flashlight uh, could be helpful. Uh, like basically they are used uh, for the, uh, the chart reading. Uh, you can uh, have a second um, uh, flashlight as a backup, stuff like that. And also sometimes uh, you can have a spare uh, a set of batteries. Okay, uh, what other items should the pilot have on board for night flight? So remember that the aeronautical charts are essential for a uh, night cross uh, cross country flight, and it is, if it is intent, uh, if the intended course is near the edge of the chart, the adjacent chart should have been uh, should also be available. It is also recommended to have a spare set of batteries for the flashlights. Okay, explain the arrangement and uh, interpretation uh, of the position light uh, on an air uh, on an airport or on an aircraft. This is very important. Just remember that a red light is positioned to the left. Uh, like if this is the airplane over here on the left uh, wing tip the light is always gonna be red sorry and on the right uh, wing tip the light is always gonna be white sorry a green green light so if you have seen the airplanes any airplanes uh, like at night flying at night uh, you would notice that this is also used to determine the position of the of the aircraft like is it heading to the right to the east or to the west and so the red is gonna be the left and the right is gonna be the green And there is one more light uh, at the tail, which is white. Okay, if both uh, a red and a green light uh, of another aircraft are observed, a red light is on the left and the green light is to the, uh, to the right, the airplane is flying in the same direction. So if, you have see, if you see anything uh, where, the, where the light, uh, the, the green light is to the right and like maybe you see something here like while you are flying and you see green on the right red on the left you you know that it is going in the same direction but if you see something anywhere uh, and you see uh, green on the right and red on the uh, sorry green on the left and red on the right it means that it is uh, uh, coming towards you Okay, uh, position lights are required to be on uh, during a uh, what period of time? So remember that these position lights, which we just talked about, they should be on from sunset to sunrise. Okay, when an aircraft is operated in uh, or in close uh, in close proximity uh, to a night operation operations area, what is the requ uh, what is required of an aircraft? So the aircraft must be clearly illuminated if you are doing the night operations uh, or flying at night. It should be clearly illuminated. It should have li uh, have lighted the position lights and be in an area uh, which is marked by obstruction lights. Okay, an aircraft anti-collision lights required uh, to be on during night of, uh, like basically, are they required uh, to be on uh, during the night operation lights? So remember the anti-collision lights.
are always required. However, the anti-collision lights uh, need not to be lighted uh, when the pilot in command determines that because of the operating conditions, uh, it would be the, uh, in the interest of safety to turn the lights off. So it should always be on unless for some reason the pilot in command thinks that it can uh, compromise the safety, uh, then you can turn it off then he can turn it off. Uh, what are uh, runway and uh, identifier lights? Also known as REEL, R-E-I-L. So runway and uh, identifier lights. Basically, they are installed at many airfields uh, to provide rapid and positive identification of the approach end of a particular runway, basically indicating that the runway is about to finish. Uh, the system consists of a pair of synchronized flashing lights located literally, literally uh, on each side of the runway threshold. Uh, reels may be omnidirectional or unidirectional facing the approach area. Okay, uh, a runway edge light system. So we'll talk about the runway end identifier lights. Now the runway edge light system, these are used to outline the edges of the runways uh, during the periods of darkness uh, uh, or, or even uh, when there is a restricted uh, visibility conditions. Uh, they are white and expect on, uh, except on the, uh, the instrument runways, uh, yellow replaces white. Okay, then there is another one known as the runway uh, center line lighting system. Lighting system. So the center line lighting system, it is installed on some precision approach uh, runways to facilitate landing under uh, adverse visibility conditions. So basically they are on the center line and they help you guide your airplane uh, uh, to facilitate the, uh, 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 if there are some adverse visibility conditions, they're going to be really helpful in that. Okay, touchdown zone lights, also known as TDZL. These are the touchdown zone light, uh, lights. They consist of two rows of uh, transverse light bars uh, disposed symmetrically uh, about the runway center line. Uh, it, this system kind of uh, consists of steady burning white lights which start at uh, 100 feet beyond the landing threshold and extend up to like 3000 feet beyond the landing threshold. So basically kind of uh, in, in guides you where to touch down at the runway. Okay, uh, describe several different types of the taxiway lighting. Okay. So taxiway has like they have the edge lights they outline the edges of the taxiways and they are blue lights. They have the center line lights. They assist uh, ground traffic in low visibility conditions. They have the clearance bar lights. They are installed at the holding position where you uh, stop and hold uh, for the clearance. Uh, they uh, installed on the holding positions and consist of uh, three uh, in pavement steady burning yellow lights these clearance, uh, they are known as the clearance bar lights. Then we have the runway guard lights installed at the taxiway uh, runway interse uh, intersections uh, consists of either a pair of elevated flashing lights uh, on either side uh, of, the, of the taxiway or in pavement uh, yellow lights installed across the taxiway. Then the, the last one we have is the stop bar lights used to confirm ATC clearance to uh, enter or cross an active runway in low visibility condition.
Okay, what are the different types of uh, rotating beacons uh, used to identify airports? So as we know that airports do have the rotating beacons. So white and green uh, means that if you have white and green, it means that it is a light uh, lighted land airport. If you have green alone, right, it is again the same thing. So both means uh, lighted land airport. If you have white and yellow, uh, it means lighted water airport. If you have yellow, again, it means the same thing, uh, lighted water airport. If we have uh, green, yellow, and white, green, yellow, and white, it's mean it means it's a heli airport. If it is white uh, with the dual peaked and green. plus green, it means it's a military airport. Okay, describe several types of the obstruction lighting. So, obstruction lighting. So we have the aviation red obstruction lights. They are uh, flashing aviation red beacons uh, and steady burning aviation red lights uh, during the uh, nighttime operations. Then we have the medium and high intensity white obstruction lights. Uh, they could be used uh, during the daytime or twilight uh, with reduced intensity for nighttime operations. Uh, not normally installed on structures less than 200 feet. Then we have the dual lights, um, basically they are combination of flashing aviation red beacons and steady burning uh, aviation red, uh, red lights for nighttime operations and flashing high intensity white uh, lights for uh, daylight uh, operation. Then we have catenary uh, lighting, they are basically uh, for the high voltage tra uh, transmission lines and uh, uh, sport structures. So they would be on different obstructions and like they don't have to do anything with the uh, airports uh, but normally when these transmission lines have been installed and these different structures have been installed we do uh, you will find these obstruction lights on them just to help the pilots not to hit into these things Okay, how does a pilot determine the status of a light system at the particular airport? Um, so, just remember that uh, the pilots need to check with uh, the chart supplement US. Or you can, uh, he can also uh, uh, look into the notums uh, to find out like about the availability, available lighting system and the light intensities and the radio control lighting system, uh, that kind of stuff. Okay, how does a pilot activate a radio controlled runway light uh, system while airborne? So, as you may or may not know that uh, we can actually, some, for some air, uh, uh, airports, we can actually turn on the lighting system uh, on the runways um, from, the, uh, from, the, from the airplane. Uh, the way we do it, if it is installed at the airport, the way we do it is like we activate the radio control lights by keying the mic a microphone on a specif uh, specified frequency and uh, the following frequency can be uh, used uh, for typical radio control lighting system. So on initial arrival, key the microphone seven times to turn the lights on and achieve maximum brightness. So if you are uh, key the microphone seven times, it's gonna turn on uh, 
the lights with the maximum brightness. If the runway lights are already on upon arrival, repeat the above sequence to ensure a full 15 minutes of lighting. So let's say you are there, you are approaching at night and it's already on and there are uh, radio control uh, lights. Uh, you should uh, key them 15 times, you know, sorry, you should key them again uh, seven times uh, so that you uh, can actually make sure that uh, you're going to get another 15 minutes of uh, lighting. And the intensity of the lights can be adjusted uh, by keying the microphone seven, five, or three times uh, within five seconds. So you can actually increase or decrease the, uh, the intensity of the lights. That's all I wanted to cover in this video. Thanks for watching.